Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how we can compare the performance of uh, CPU versus GPU for doing TensorFlow based applications. Uh, while the video itself is very focused on TensorFlow, um, it's very much applicable for all machine learning or deep learning kind of like applications and uh, again while the demo again that you'll see is around TensorFlow, uh, you can think of it as uh, a good representation for other machine learning libraries that are either uh, built on top of uh, TensorFlow or leverages TensorFlow like Keras or if you're using other frameworks like PyTorch for example. In general, um, uh, it should not be very specific to uh, a given framework, but uh, for purposes of this demo, it's all about TensorFlow. Um, so what we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at what the setup is, um, how we can compare um, and benchmark. So I'm, in my case, I'm using Docker and uh, specific Docker images, uh, but um, we could have used bare metal. Uh, so again, it's, uh, uh, it's just a preference at this point in time that I've used Docker, but um, much of the benchmark should be the same, whether it's um, on Docker or bare metal. Uh, again, bare metal, you should see some slightly improved performance, but but uh, then we are comparing apples to apples, so both CPU and GPU uh, TensorFlow applications are on Docker. And finally, we'll take a look at how we are going to be benchmarking. So um, to keep things really simple, I'm going to be using the MNIST example. Um, the MNIST uh, example is uh, for handwriting recognition. And uh, there's some sample code that already comes with uh, the TensorFlow Docker images. So that uh, makes it very convenient for me. Uh, so that's it uh, in terms of the agenda. So let's take a look at how we uh, we can set it up. Um, so in case of the setup, um, using um, uh, the Docker, the vanilla CPU version image, and I'm port forwarding it to uh, port 8888. Um, and uh, for the GPU version, um, using NVIDIA Docker and port forwarding it to 8889. Obviously, 8888, which is the default, is already taken. Uh, so the local port within the container, I'm port forwarding that uh, to my host machines, uh, 8889. Uh, if, you've, if you haven't uh, configured Docker for TensorFlow or NVIDIA Docker, take a look at the description of the video below. Uh, there are links to uh, my library which I've covered uh, separate demos for each of these. All right, so that's it for uh, the setup. And then finally, uh, in terms of the benchmark itself, we are not going to go um, overly fancy. Uh, we are just going to take a look at how we can uh, do a very basic one-on-one benchmark. All we are really doing is writing um, very basic Python code to calculate the start time um, at the very beginning and uh, the uh, uh, when it completes and calculate the elapsed time. So nothing too fancy. Um, so uh, that's it for the setup and uh, the environment. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what um, uh, the um, TensorFlow benchmark details look like. Uh, so here what I have is, uh, you may remember port 8888 is for CPU and 8889 is for GPU. So on one browser instance, I've got um, the CPU uh, version of uh, the Docker container. Uh, uh, surface through the browser, uh, the Jupyter Notebooks application, and in the second, that's uh, 8889, we have the GPU version, and uh, currently um, none of them are running. In terms of uh, the demo itself, I mentioned, um, or the benchmark, we are going to be using the MNIST uh, example, uh, so the Docker image uh, already has that uh, example. Uh, the only code change I've made is at the beginning, we've uh, calculated the start time, and at the end, uh, we are calculating the elapsed time and displaying that. Uh, so I've done the same for both the CPU version and the GPU version. And then finally, in terms of the hardware itself, um, what we have here is um, um, in this view, what you're seeing is the CPU, uh, view of the CPU. Uh, it looks a little busy uh, in part because of the video recording, which is uh, taking up a lot of the CPU, but uh, there's not a whole lot going on. 
and uh, in this view here what we have is uh, the NVIDIA SMI command uh, which I've covered in previous videos and uh, basically um, it gives us a view into the GPU utilization and again the GPU utilization right now you can see that all the applications and the processes uh, that you're seeing um, are uh, for um, uh, the graphics so none of these are being used for compute so you'll notice everything has a G implying graphics and again um, it's because of the video recording that it's actually taking up uh, so much of uh, the uh, GPU already so so that's the benchmark and the setup uh, so let's crack on and let's run this workbook um, so I'm on the CPU version let me close that tab I'm on the CPU version and um, Basically, I'm going to run all and this is going to take a while, but one of the things you'll notice is now that I've started running, uh, the CPU has obviously spiked. You can see um, all the cores are uh, pretty busy and it should take a while, uh, but then I'm going to uh, pause uh, the video. All right. So... Um, the uh, the run is complete and it took 78 seconds again um, I haven't explained what uh, the uh, the workbook itself is doing I'll let you discover that on your own but uh, this is probably the hello world kind of like example of uh, machine learning the amnest uh, handwrite recognition so again um, skipping through the gory details of what's in the workbook but uh, we are just looking at uh, the overall time so that was the first run but uh, let's run it uh, a couple of times so I'm going to stop it so our first run was 78 seconds let's uh, clear the output and uh, let's run that again it's a good idea not to uh, base off uh, assumptions just on a single run good to run it a couple of times uh, so first time it was 78 seconds all right that's the second run and the second run took about 76 uh, seconds so that's quite an equal match so I think we'll stop with the runs for the CPU and now let's switch over to the GPU version uh, again you'll notice after the run the CPUs kind of uh, come down uh, or the usage has come down so let's uh, jump over to uh, the GPU version um, so again we've got uh, an identical setup um, so it's the same uh, example the docker uh, image example um, and all we're doing is benchmarking the time difference so let's uh, kick that off I'm gonna clear all the outputs and uh, let's run all and this time you'll notice that in a bit uh, you'll find another entry come up here um, and sure enough um, that's our um, GPU version of the application uh, that's just come up and you'll notice here it's uh, it's got a C implying that it's uh, for computer and not for graphics right so that's uh, completed and uh, if you take a look at it it's uh, done that in uh, about nine seconds um, so again uh, let's run that uh, again okay um, seven uh, since there's a sizable difference I'm going to run it a third time um, again um, the first time that is run it uh, allocates memory as you can see so it's um, it's probably going to be slow uh, or slower the first time so you can see that it kind of like stabilizes at around seven seconds so um, here from a very basic benchmark perspective you can see that the CPU uh, versus the GPU and um, though this is a very basic example you can already see that uh, the GPU is around 10x uh, times faster so obviously uh, it's uh, very dependent on the hardware resources uh, both the CPU as well as the GPU uh, again in my case the GPU is uh, NVIDIA 1080 Ti um, and uh, the CPU is an i7 8th generation with uh, 12 cores uh, but you can already see that um, there's about a 10x uh, performance difference and in this uh, example it's uh, probably the most basic um, uh, examples that we have run but uh, if, if you think about it in the real world particularly if you're doing some heavy processing like uh, image uh, computer vision uh, based um, deep learning applications it uh, can typically run in the hours so it's kind of like a difference uh, 
between running something say for four hours on a GPU versus 40 hours, which is practically a working uh, week, if you will, workday week uh, set of hours on a CPU. So you can see where you tend to get significant productivity and cost savings uh, by utilizing a GPU. So that's a wrap for this uh, quick benchmark. I uh, hope uh, it's uh, been helpful in uh, giving you insights into CPU versus uh, GPU for deep learning and machine learning. Thanks. Thanks for watching.